Welcome back to the Nitty Gritty, folks. Episode 121. I didn't even have to ask you for that. Shut up, Brett. <laughs> Gosh. You're right. Okay. I kind of remembered it, but Brock Blake is here with us. Glad to be here. Can't mess that name up. Nope. We got that one down. That's a good name, Brock Blake. Thank Two you. single syllables. Both starts with B. I like it. But the CEO, the mastermind of the great Lendios. Lendio, right. next to Cabela's. Next to Cabela's. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've got a one o'clock appointment at Cabela's today. Yeah, it's one o'clock. Got to hustle with this Cabela's. podcast. There's a sale on Carhartt gear. That's right. I, I'm going then. It's the only place that sells Carhartt that fits me. Well, welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Glad to be here. Happy to have you. So, Brock, um, where did you grow up? And I, w- I always like to know, did you grow up in like an entrepreneur family? Like, is that something that was kind of put in you or did that come later on in life? Yeah, I'm an, I'm, I'm from O-Town, uh, Ogden, Utah. So. Oh, I thought you were going to say Oakland. <laughs> I wish. Like O-Town. You got the Raiders hat going there. <laughs> I was going to say Oakland. Oh, the Utah version of O-Town. It's pretty much Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of our version of Oakland. Right? <laughs> That's as close as we're yeah. going to get. Um, so grew up... Uh, there, uh, I'm the youngest of six, okay. and there's five boys and one girl. She's the oldest. Okay. So from the young, being the youngest, my my mom was a school teacher. My dad was a psychologist. So just kind of middle, you know, America family. Sure. Um, and uh, but you know we have a lot of entrepreneurs in in my family. Like three of us are entrepreneurs, um, and uh, and being the youngest. Um, we we were always like I was battling for everything, you know. Oh, yeah. I was uh, you know, attention, we, food, exactly. Everything. Five boys. We were, <laughs> and we had a big yard. So we were always playing football or soccer or dunk ball or you know whatever it was. Just just always competing for. Um, and uh, but my mom was like really made us work hard. Um, so we were always, we had, we had to do chores or we couldn't go, you know, the friend's house. And if we did go to the friend's house, she would legit come and get us and say, <laughs> you're coming home, <laughs> get your chores done before you have to go to, yeah, you know, we you need to go be more work. like that at my house. Oh man. I am the exact first. opposite of that. I, yeah. I don't, I was just thinking about that this week. I'm like, man, I gotta be better. You know, that's why they say wealth skips a generation. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. Probably some truth to that. So anyways, I, I had, I, uh, but I got a paper out when I was young and actually that was kind of like the best thing for me that taught me how to work and taught me to be an entrepreneur. And I always knew if I wanted to go buy something, you know, I could go and to the, the neighbor's house and collect on the bill and I'd get $50 and I could go buy whatever I wanted. So it was just like that yep. taught me about money, you know, early. I wonder how many people early. started it with paper routes. I had a paper route. Did you? I, I had paper routes for years. Yeah. Like even into know. adult, even <laughs> yeah. into adulthood, I'd cover paper routes for like my uncle who did oh, them in really? Arizona. Like he'd want to take the night off. I was like 19 or 20. I'm like, wow. I'll do it. And so that's funny. I have not even thought about my paper route. I used to do it on rollerblades. Yeah. Like I'd go fold in the morning at five in the morning, go to school. And then after school, I'd load up my big thing and go skate oh, yeah. the neighborhoods and just. Man, even on snowy days like today. Yeah, right? Well, I was, Calif- I was in oh, California. I was in California. I'm like, today. I'd use my Segway, yeah. my <laughs> all wheel, you know, whatever outdoor Segway. So funny stuff. story. Cause I mean, you don't really have paper routes now, no. right? No. But it was probably a year ago. I was going to the gym. It was early. So everything was dark and I pull out and I noticed there's this car parked at my neighbor's <laughs> house. And as soon as I opened my car and pull out, they ripped out of our street. I was like, okay, that's really weird. So I like followed him. And then I saw him. He came out and hurry and pulled into another house. I was like, is he like trying to hide from me? And so I stayed right there. And then he pulled out and took <laughs> off when I followed him. <laughs> and then I saw him turn into a street. <gasps> and I was like, okay, I know where he's got to come out. So I went and like met and I stood there. <laughs> And he came back out and pulled into another car. And I thought he was like hiding from me. Right. And so I pulled up to him and it's this young kid and he starts waving a, do- a newspaper. <laughs> he, he was just delivering newspapers. Probably happens to him all the time. Yeah. But I was like, what is happening right now? It's like a white Your flag. neighborhood watch is legit. Yeah, man. you don't mess around. <laughs> on it. I was just like, what is going on? This yeah. car is just ripping through places. Huh. That's all of us. He was just doing his paper. I'm like, oh, sorry, dude. Yeah, it yeah. used to be like every other house. So it was easy. But now it's just like, you probably have to go as fast as you can because it's three blocks apart yeah it's yeah. wild pretty amazing I'm, uh experiences through that though oh for sure yeah totally 
You oh, there's know. nothing worse though than folding nothing papers worse. at five in the morning. And you, there's some cutthroat dudes in there. Like you got some of those old crotchety dudes that have like huge routes that have been doing it for years and you'll yep. go in there just wanting to get your stack. And I'm like this little kid. And, but yeah, it totally taught, taught me how to deal with adults and get in line or, or not be scared, yep. you know? Yep. But I didn't have to collect the bill. So that was, we had to collect nice the bill. Part. We, you know, we, if we wanted to get paid, we, we'd have to go to the neighbor's house and ask him for money, wow. tell him how much they owed us. And so uh, all the brothers did it or just you had it? My, my older brother, just three years older than me, the two of us did it. And okay. then, and then I took it over and did it. I, I got like an extra route so I could earn more money. And how did, old were you? Man, I probably started when I was eight or nine. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, that's so it's awesome. pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. And so kind of that was the beginning of the entrepreneur. Well, then just from, I mean, I thought I was going to be a doctor, honestly. Uh, really? And then I was, I was uh, der- serving a mission uh, f- uh, for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints down in Uruguay. Okay. And uh, there was a very heavy set lady walking down these, this, this street in high heels. And it was like a cobblestone street. And she tripped and fell. And she ripped her ankle right off, oh. right off her foot. Like her, it, her foot twisted off. And I was the first one there. Oh. And in Uruguay, they don't have like ambulance coming, like rushing to the scene. So, you know, we were, she was in shock and we were trying to treat it and, and wrap it and all that stuff that you have to do. And, uh, and I, um, and I was there for like an hour and a half and, and to try and figure out how to help this, this woman and. And honestly, even doing? for a month after that, I could not get the sight out of my mind. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm out. I am not no, going to be a doctor. That is not that's for me. That's not for me. Uh, and luckily, you know, and, and uh, so I, I, I did entrepreneurial things. And like at BYU, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I went and bought a bunch of scooters from China and sold them. And I, you know, I did a, a uh, I how played you, soccer there, and so I did a soccer camp. I don't know. I just you just figure it out, right? You know. Okay. And I well, the reason it is I wanted a, at BYU the parking sucks, and so and I wanted a so, I wanted a parking a good parking spot every yeah. day. So and uh, so I'm like, I need a scooter. How am I going to get a scooter? All right, if I buy six and sell five of them, then I can get this scooter. You know. So I started a soccer camp because I played soccer and during the summer. I'm like, I could go make money doing a soccer camp. You played soccer and, at BYU? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just like, it was just natural. It was just like kind of in my blood, you know, from day one and then, and just kept getting a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. I, I won an entrepreneurial competition, won $50,000 and that kind of got me off, off, at BYU? off the ground. At BYU, yeah. For what? Really? Yeah. yeah. What was it? Well, it's it was it was less of a it wasn't like a business plan competition where we had an idea. This one okay. was, um, I was at BYU, but it wasn't a BYU sponsored program. Oh, okay. It was it was like the I don't know if you guys remember the old school uh, TV show The Apprentice. Oh yeah, of course. It was like The Apprentice, right? Okay. Except instead of having Donald Trump at the end saying you're <laughs> fired. <laughs> This was, uh, we had 100 applicants, 20 of us went through this eight-week competition where you're doing sales competition and marketing competition and all kinds of stuff like that. And then at the end, you win $50,000. You could use it to go buy a business or start a business or whatever. Wow. And uh, so I was one of those winners, got some money, and uh, that kind of got me on my feet. Yeah. That's so cool. What was the business? Do we know that? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It was it was more like about the apprentice. Being the they, they, they just do like tasks. Oh, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. So it was just you using your entrepreneurial yeah. skills. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Kind of forced you to learn all the different aspects wow. of it, if you will. Yeah. It was sweet. So what did you do with the fifty grand? So then I uh, I was. And how old were you? So were you still a student? Bought a scooter. I still, I, I bought a, a scooter. lot of scooters. <laughs> <laughs> the first electric scooter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was I I went out and kind of started trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was going to start a business. Was I going to buy a business? Um, I was talking to a bunch of, you know, Sub-Zero ice cream? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I met with the founder of that. It was just a concept back then. I was going to buy that and be the CEO and franchise it and kind of make it a big deal. And, and, and you were a student still at the yeah, time. Yeah. And I, but I decided not to. The reason why is because I started ta- every business owner I talked to, I, you know, I asked them what their biggest challenge was and their biggest challenge was getting access to capital. 
And um, so then I met um, Paul Allen, who is the founder of MyFamily.com and Ancestry.com. And, and uh, Paul had come up with this idea around, well, all these business owners need capital. What if we put together this kind of dating site with entrepreneurs and angel investors and let's connect them? And uh, and uh, so we, I partnered with him, brought my fifty thousand dollars. We got my other co-founder, uh, Trent Miskin, who's kind of the the, the tech talent, right. and uh, that's what kind of started me on my, a real entrepreneurial journey. Okay. Always need a salesman and a nerd. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. Together, that's it's true. You do no for sure, right? Well, there's books that yeah, you got to have the implementer, you got to have the visionary, yeah. All Those are stuff. better names. <laughs> That's why we work well together. <laughs> I'm the layman. So what what was that business? And was it the three of you then that started out? You, yeah. Paul and Trent? Yeah. Uh, so the business was called Funding Universe. Uh, okay. And it was, like I said, it was there was two aspects to it. One aspect was the business owner posting your business plan on a, on a website. And then we recruited investors that would come in and look through the business plans. And it was it's kind of like swipe left, swipe right, you know, okay. only for business plans. And they would, they would connect that way. And then the second aspect was we built out like uh, speed dating events, um, only called speed pitching. So that's cool. We had entrepreneurs going table to table to table, pitching in a room full of angels and VCs. And they'd have seven minutes, four minutes to pitch, three minutes of, of uh, kind of Q and A, then they'd rotate. And uh, so was we anything like that happening at the time? Uh, uh-uh. it was very like. In fact, our launch, like we did this press conference to launch it, um, and Paul Allen knew Governor Huntsman at the time. Okay, and so Governor Huntsman came and did this press conference with us to like oh. launch this concept because it was totally new. And uh, so it. It sucked though. The business model, like, it, it, we made every mistake in the book. I'm not kidding. Like, if we, and, and we kind of banged our head against the wall for five years trying to make, figure out how to make that thing work. And the problem is, is that there was no way to, like, we didn't have a way to make money. Um, and business owners, you know, they don't need, most people aren't going to raise money from an angel investor or a venture capitalist. Most, most are, you know, restaurant owners or landscapers or dry cleaners, and they need, they need loans. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, uh, we, we try, we tried to make that thing work, but five years later we shut it down and launched, launched Lendio. So what was the most difficult part about making it work? Right. You, know, you, you talk about, you made all the mistakes. Like what, are there any that stood out that either it's like, okay, I learned a lot from that one or, oh, that one was extra painful. Yeah. Yeah, so the most painful, I'll tell you the most painful experience we had. Well, there, I'll, I'll preface it with the reason why it was hard to, to work is so we tr- we're like trying to figure out how to make the, make money at it, like to, to, to actually sure. live, right? So, so the business model, like at first we're like, well, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the business owner will pay to post their business plan and they'll pay a monthly subscription. So we thought about kind of this online monthly subscription and, and that didn't work. And then we're like, okay, well maybe we can charge for these events and have sponsors come and do that. And we, and we did some of that and, and that didn't really work that well. And then we decided, okay, well, what if we, what if we, we had a business owner come in, they'd pay $99. We, we would do an analysis of the business. And if it was like a really good business, then we'd put them in front of our investors and if it wasn't, then we would come back to them with services to help them. Um, so a business plan or a financial model, or, yeah. and and they would, we would charge them, you know, two thousand or three thousand dollars for whatever packages or services. So we started to do that. And uh, but th- let me get so but we so my point was it was like we we the problem was though you don't want a business owner who needs money to actually be the one to pay for it. Sure. Right. When you've got angels on the other side or the ones right. that are the wealthy and they're not paying for it. Yeah. So um, it was just flawed from that perspective. So anyways, we're during the period where we have a lot of businesses coming in. We're selling these packages, these business plans and financial models. We had um, we had a lot of clients like we built it to a few million in revenue and and um, and we uh, and we were we were sincere about 
doing a good job and taking care of our customers and whatnot. So we had this guy that was in charge of our customer service, uh, all of our customer service. If anyone had a problem or a complaint or whatever, he would, you, you know, he'd reach out to this number and okay. this guy would p- pick it up or they'd have an email address. So for a while, this guy was just acting extremely weird. Just like, I, I couldn't figure, figure it out, you know? And finally one Friday afternoon, we were like, you know, we, we got to let this guy go. Like, it's just not right for our culture, kind of poison in, in with what we're doing. And he's just acting weird. So we let him go on a Friday afternoon. I get home that night. It's about Friday at 8. I'm like, maybe I should go look at that customer service email and see if there's any customers that have reached out between 2 and we let him go and 8 p.m. that night. And I go and I pull it up and I look at it and I see, like, hundreds of, of customer emails that were completely wow. not responded to, uh, hundreds. And you know, when you'd have one customer that had reached out, maybe they paid three thousand dollars and they didn't reach out, and no one responded. And then, and then they reach out again. This time they're dropping f bombs, yeah. right? And they're they're upset. Yikes. And and I'm just seeing like angry email after angry email after angry email. And I just like I literally almost fainted like on the spot, just so sick to my stomach thinking about you know these these customers and he was reporting back to us each week everything's good here's the reports you know here's how many we got here's who we responded to it was just me just he doesn't he didn't work the whole time so i i shut down my laptop and i i just told my wife gotta go for a walk and uh it was cold and i just like for two hours walked around the neighborhood just like clearing my mind then i got back and reached out to our team, let them know what happened. And we just spent the entire weekend just like wow. reaching out to every single customer we could possibly reach out to. Well, here was the kicker. When they weren't getting responded to, they started complaining um, to the Better Business Bureau. Uh-huh. And then when you're not responding to the Better the Bu- oh, Business Bureau, oh. you're not responding to the Better Business Bureau, then one of the emails is like, your status is being revoked, yeah. you know, which basically means you get like skull and crossbones on your profile. And, <laughs> unless and, you pay us this much money. Unless you pay us this much money. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I show up Monday morning to the Better Business Bureau and I'm like, look, here's all the emails that we sent over the weekend. This is what happened. This is why, you know, so please don't revoke us. It's not who we, who we are. Yeah. It's... And they're like, sorry, you know, there's nothing we can do oh. about it once you have it. And and it's for a year. And uh, so like big F and revoked and whatever for a year. <laughs> and it was that was like the beginning of the end. I'm just like, this this isn't this isn't the this isn't what I'm wanna do, you know. This is but what we knew, what we knew is that the demand for capital, like business owners needed it. And we had a lot of business owners coming in, it's just the business model was wrong. So we started thinking on nights and weekends, like how do we, how do we tweak this thing to make it free for the business owner? How do we f- switch from equity financing to debt financing? How do we create technology? I don't want to get, I don't want to be in the business of doing business plans, like none of that. And uh, so, uh, so that was kind of the start of this dream that we've launched. I just read something that's like, if you want to know where like business and where the world is going, find the smartest people and ask what they're doing on the nights and weekends and that's where it's going like you do what they do on the nights and weekends full time and you're going to be okay i must not be very smart <laughs> <laughs> that's true like going to uh, crypto classes that <clears throat> uh-huh are you doing crypto no this guy is oh. this is the finance wizard nice i go to his house the other day to see the puppies <laughs> and I'm like, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to a crypto class. I'm like, of course you are. <laughs> That's why you live in this house and I live in my house. <laughs> no, it's cool though. I mean, it's it, what you just said totally rings true. Like it's, you take your free time and you do something constructive with it. So, yeah. So at that point, like you grew up with successful revenue. Did you have to, I mean, how big was your team? It was 75. We were about, we were probably about eight to 10 million in revenue. And, uh, so, so I mean, that over the next fast. year over the, well, that took me, f- took us four years to do that. Yeah. Right. Um, but over the next year we started dreaming up Lendio on nights and weekends so that in 2011, we shut, we shut funding universe down okay. went from a million in revenue a month to zero overnight, went from about 80 employees to about five and, and just started over. But what month. an awesome part of the story. 
<laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it is now. But well, it is now, dude, but la- that's what I'm saying. You got happen. like no risk, no reward, man. Like, oh, my gosh, you man. You believed in it. And I mean, for it. Uh, how, what proof that do you need that you believe in an yeah. idea or are passionate about something? Like, I mean, even though you hated what you were doing, that is still real revenue. Yeah. And that's a lot. Yeah. Oh, man. What that was that like terrifying. having to get rid of the team? Well, that's the first and hopefully only time where we've had to do like some like a larger layoff. Yeah, did you do it over Zoom? Career. <laughs> <laughs> that idiot is all over the news. Oh, you're that, talking Better.com. Yeah, that yeah. Who laid off nine hundred people? And now his, I just Zoom. read his like four of his big executives just resigned. They don't want anything to do with him. Wow, that's crazy. I bet that was bad for Zoom. We did not. It's do like, it on oh, Zoom. gee, <laughs> yeah, don't do it on Thank Zoom. Thank goodness. But yeah, that'd be scary too, right? For you starting over. I mean, it wasn't just walking away from the revenue, but laying no, people it off sucked because that'd be hard. First of all, doing that, laying people off is it was the worst day ever. Um, Were you able to you bring know. any of them with you? So we had about five, right. five of us that are kind of, um, and we uh, we we thought we had okay this is all going to work out plan- great we have all these business owners that need financing but we're and so we're going to just kind of transition this over to this new business and we you know we're going to even though we're going to shut this business down we're going to launch this other thing and it's all going to work out great uh-huh. you know and we're going to be <laughs> back to a million dollars in revenue in no time right away <laughs> <laughs> oh dude it wasn't even i mean it was not even it was really, really, really challenging. Like, and it took us, it took us uh, about three years from that point to really figure out the business model. Like, we just still thought we knew what we were doing, and we we didn't. And uh, so, like, give me an example. Like, what did you think you had didn't work? I mean, like, what were some of these iterations of the business over those three years? Yeah. So we. Uh, so the first thing was we're gonna make it free for the business owner. That's like. The, one of the kind of core tenants I wanted. I didn't want to charge someone who needed money for some, for services. Yeah. So um, we decided, okay, well, let's go through. Let's go get banks on board, and uh, and then we'll we'll, th- we'll do a, basically a lead gen model. Let's get a really qualified customer and hand that off to the bank and let them you know do it. it took us a long. Banks are slow and banks oh, yeah. are hard yeah. oh, and man. banks. Uh, and, and they just, it was new and innovative and they didn't quite get it. And they don't really know, they're not built in a way to like get a qualified lead and turn that into a funded deal and, and, you know, conversion and whatnot. So just the long road of trying to get a bank on board took forever. Once we got a few banks on board, we learned that, uh, like a couple things. Number one, Lead gen sucks for the customer. Still not a great customer experience. Like yeah. we could help them get a loan, but if you're signing up for something and then all of a sudden you're getting called from a few different players and your cell phone blows up. they all have different up. wants and needs and yeah. some yeah. want this info, some want that. Oh, yeah. oh, that would drive me nuts. Yeah. So that, that customer experience sucked. Um, so uh, that was one. Two, it, a lot of these banks, they wanted they wanted new loans, but when they, um, when they thought about like, they're like, okay, tell us the criteria of the type of customer you wanted. It was like finding a needle in a haystack. Right. Um, you know, I want a business that's been in business three years, that has millions of revenue, that's profitable, that has collateral, <laughs> that has good credit. Sounds like a that bank. Has, right? Like Sounds a like break. a business that yeah. doesn't need a lending. Yeah, did they, exactly. <laughs> and so um, the number of customers that we could serve up to these banks was like so small. And then the bank's when even if we did serve up one of the uh, one of those customers, they couldn't close it. So just you know, we kept trying to figure out how to you know make that work. We we tried um, we tried a subscription service again to this business owner. We tried selling technology to banks uh, for uh, during a period of time that didn't work. Um, just a bunch of different things that we tried, and finally, it's 2014. Now we started. I uh, started. I won that business plan competition in 2005. Right. I started fund my first business about 2006. So this is now, you know, eight years later, 2014. We finally are like, well, we know how. The two things happened that actually like helped us finally like find product market fit. The first thing was we um, 
we got lenders that uh, a lot of fintech lenders were kind of starting to come come on board that had a national footprint that weren't trying you know that had a, a, a broader kind of criteria. Um, so that was number one, and number two, we decided we're going to handle the entire customer experience and put multiple options in front of the business owner. Um, and so we did it manually at first. So we'd gather the full loan package, gather the tax returns and the bank statements and all the docs, pull credit. And then we would submit it to some lenders and say, Hey, do you like this deal? You can't reach out to the customer. We're going to, you know, um, smart. And, uh, and they, and then they would say yes. And so we'd get two or three offers and we'd go back to that customer and we'd get that deal funded and the customer didn't have to pay for anything. And the bank paid us and we got paid when the loan closed. And it was like, it just like just clicked right there worked yeah know? the customer loved it they were like that was amazing i didn't have to do the work you put all these options in front of me we got paid decently well on it the bank loved it um high conversion rate and so we we're just like okay we're going all in here and uh and so um we started building technology around it taken from this manual you know one-on-one -on -one kind of person experience to you know doing it at scale and that's when finally it kind of started to take off. Well, it's crazy because you look back at that and to your point, you know, eight years, nine years later, I mean, technically two businesses, but if you really pop the hood, it's probably like 15 yeah. businesses oh, inside yeah. of those. Yep. Right. But it was just like, it's, you know, that's like, there, there's no failure in life and entrepreneurship. There's just like these learning experiences, right? So you have to continue to, to take what you get and just kind of build on top of it. Because it's crazy to think you would have never thought where you started to where you've ended. Like that is definitely not a straight line. Like At it is all. not a clear path on how you ended up there. Yep. Right. But it's just, it's that belief in the ability to kind of just keep grinding through it. So as you were doing that though, I mean, had you started a family yet? Yeah. So our, our, we have four kids. Okay. Um, and our Jackson, my, our oldest, uh, was born when basically when I started my entrepreneurial career in 2005. Wow. Um, and, uh, so we, we went through a bunch of different kind of like, he grew up with stress dad. We, yes. <laughs> we, my wife had some savings. She brought in the family. She was my, you know, she was my sugar mama early on. And, Dad's on a walk again. <laughs> <laughs> and then my parents, you know, lived, uh, in Germany for a couple, for a few years. Um, and so we lived in their house and, uh, we, we just like, just scrapped yeah. for a long time. And honestly, I say this, um, people think I'm kind of exaggerating. That's like what you'd say. Like the business should have died like 20 times. Like right. there were 20 times at least where we were on our deathbed and I didn't know if we were going to make it the next day. That's where the best stuff comes from. What's funny is we always talk about what's so interesting is we've had some really successful people in here and there is always this element of like, they don't really know what they're doing. Uh -huh. yeah. You know what I mean? Like it is just kind of throwing darts right? and just wait, which is kind of how Lendio started, right? Like you yeah. finally threw that dart where it's like, wait, that's it. That worked. And if you didn't keep going through the failures, which they're not failures, they're just, they're learnings. They're just turn. Yeah. You, know, you, just, you just turn this way, turn that way. Like you just find what stick and you just keep going. But it's like, if you didn't get through the part of, well, the customer didn't know what the bank sucks, like that part. I mean, that right there gave you one of the biggest parts that makes, I think what makes Lendio awesome is I, as a business owner, I deal with you guys, not yep. with the freaking, but nobody wants to deal with banks. Exactly. Like, it, and I mean, that's a huge part of it, right? So it's like, you just keep, you keep pressing and you don't doubt. It's like the more you hear that these really successful CEOs and companies didn't really know what they were doing until they knew what they were doing. It's like ignorance is bliss. It, yeah, it makes you just feel like, okay, just keep your head down, keep going, believe in yourself, like if, and, and you'll get it, you know, well, if you're passionate I mean, about it. You guys know that, right? It's just yeah. like sometimes, you know, you're, you're, um, you're, you're stupidly persistent. <laughs> right, uh -huh. right. You know, like some of, there's no logic that, that says that you should keep going. Um, everyone. There's a confidence too though, right? Like, yeah, there, there's a confidence there, and there's this will of, um, like, there's just that grit of I'm, I, I've gone this far, I'm not stopping sure. now, or I see this little glimmer of hope, or 
whatever that's just that gets you through it um the fun of solving problems too right like put something in front of you it's like okay we'll figure that out now yeah well and that's an entrepreneur Uh right everyone asks like i think anybody can be one but i don't think most people are wired for one to be one because it does like most people would just like freak out after the first one or two like mess ups failures whatever you want to call it and just go back to the paycheck but when you have that, just, I mean, it's like when I did Bam Bam, it was like 80% failure rate in the first five years. I mean, I, for me, it was just like, oh, that's not going to happen to me. Like, no way. Right. Like, I knew I was good. I knew I could do it. It was just a stupidity. It was blind, <laughs> like, but it was confidence. Right. And you just, that's what it takes. But a lot of people don't have that. But dude, when you're knocking on doors as a, 11, 12 year old. How old were you when you did your paper out? Yeah. Dude, when you're asking for money, like we kind of skipped over that. When you're asking your neighbor, I mean, I'm sure you knew some of them like, hey, uh, brother uh, Johnson, uh, <laughs> you're past you too much. You got to pay up, sucker. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you don't pay you me. Think you're kidding. That's no, what but it was. That's totally <laughs> right. I would go and he'd be like, hey, six months past, dude. Yeah. And I'd be like, I deliver your paper every single day. You owe me, and it was you know you eight seventy five going to a month, right? Yeah. So you owe me fifty bucks, which to me, fifty bucks is a good, lot of money. It was good money, but but yeah, you, you and they would avoid you. You know, yeah. they wouldn't answer the door or whatever. It's like but. you are my Sunday school teacher. What are you teaching <laughs> yeah. me? Pay your bill. Pay your bill. <laughs> but I mean, that does set you up to like. That's a hard thing to ask a kid to do. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's just so important. Life, that's going to be there. Like the you know? teacher put, find ways to put your kids in those yes. opportunities, right? I remember Susan Peterson came on, one of the first guests of our show, and she said something I've just taken to heart, like make your kids, she's like, even when they go to order food, like yes. make your kids order food. Yeah. And like just last night, Jen and I, we were out and I was like, no, make them order food. Like for some reason that's like clicking. It's just, you're teaching them at least to interact but to tell someone what they want yeah right and like making them do just those little things i think well, how to have a conversation everything's that. on these stupid screens now yeah. like all their conversations with their friends are on text me- like you watch them talk to people like i have adhd so me not looking in people's eyes is pretty common like it's something that i really try to focus on yeah but that's important like yeah look them in the eye say thank you say what you want say please like but if they're not having those human interactions like it, it's huge. Like yeah. even if you're just at McDonald's, like order your own Happy Meal. Like tell them what you want. Right. So that's cool. So I had five. I've had five moments in my entrepreneurial career where I I say they're my they're uh, fetal position moments where I I literally be in like wow. basically like on the floor in fetal position of like I'm not sure I'm gonna make it through this. Yeah. And actually, and I and you think you get to a size and scale where you think you're not gonna have any more of those. Um, two of them have been the last two years. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, just crazy, like PPP these, loans. PPP loans. <laughs> PPP I was loans. in a fetal position for those too. <laughs> yeah. You helped me actually. We'll talk about that. PPP loans, man. We had a lot at stake, and and I had two two moments, fetal position moments. Yeah. How did you get through those? What I mean, did you do something like what was it? And can we talk about them? I yeah, kind of yeah. want to know what they were. Yeah. So the first one, these are pretty good stories, and I don't know what, what, what we got on time, but um, I'll keep All it the short. Time in the world, Cabela's can wait, man. I'll keep it short, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got it <laughs> with Cabela's. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so PPP was. Um, an incredible experience because I was just, I showed this graph yesterday in this meeting where like Lendio, you know, we're, we're hundreds of employees doing, you know, a billion dollars of loans a year. We're like 22 months in a row, just of growth, um, really consistent growth. And all of a sudden March, 2020 comes and, uh, overnight, every lender in America stops lending. So we go from millions in revenue, the, you know, uh, the, the, the month prior to zero. And um, during this time, I, I had heard that, uh, you know, I was kind of following the, the, what was happening in, in Washington, that they were going to come up with a stimulus package and they were going to create a program where every business owner in America could get access to a loan. And I was like, I don't, like, there were no details about it. And I, and I come across this 
uh, quote from Winston Churchill that basically says every individual in their life has a moment where they're either they're literally tapped on the shoulder um, and uh, and basically because they're uniquely qualified to to I'm butchering the quote, but they're that moment. They're uniquely qualified to um, to basically take Take it's an opportunity. Right. Take advantage of it, right? right. And uh, and I and I and I reached out to my board and my C my C team, and I'm like, I sent them the the, the quote, um, and I said, this is our moment. Like, there's no one in America who's more qualified to help these small business owners um, than we are. And this is like, it's like a patriotic moment. Like, we got to step up and do something because um, it was scary for all of us during the time. For and sure. The problem is the first question they asked me is, okay, how are we going to make money? How are we going to do this? Because at the time there was no way for us to like to get paid to do it because right. we're not a lender ourselves. A little PTSD from the prior business, <laughs> right? <laughs> how are we going to make money? There's there's a need because yeah, you have to have the money to loan to get money on the back end from it, right? Right, and we're not right. a lender; we're right. the marketplace. And 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 I said, I don't know, but I we'll figure it out. Uh, but we need to do this. And most everyone else, all of our competitors and everyone else, just did layoffs and furloughs, and they just like we're going to pull back and we're just going to sit on the sidelines and wait and see. We decided to go all in, um, and uh, so we we figured out what the the application would be. We built technology around it in five days. We okay, um, that right there. Let's not skip over that. <laughs> we built technology in five days. Yeah. That sounds like a fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. This is all still good. Sounds this like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> we built technology around it in five days. And uh, the night before the program was supposed to launch, um, when we had 300 lenders that basically said, yeah, we'll, we'll fund as many loans as you can bring us. So the night before the program was supposed to launch, the SBA came out and said, we knew that we, we sent out this application of what a PPP loan would look like. We're changing everything. This is literally at like 10 o'clock at night. We're supposed to launch at 7 a.m. the next morning. So um, our team spends the entire night redeveloping our, our technology, our application. And what does that mean? Like, like what has to go into that? Because people are listening like, okay, we d redeveloped it. And like, oh, I changed a checkbox. That's no, not what it, happened. It's, um, and it's, you're taking a, a PDF application and you're turning it into a, a customer experience where someone can go in and securely, this is the most important, like data security, put in their information, submit an application and, and the experience of what happens next and, and how, you know, and what are the information you're gathering, the documents you're uploading, like all of that, it's the where you store it. It's, it's going back it's into the matrix crazy. to fix something. For sure. It's yeah. coding, right? Like it's oh, yeah. getting, yeah. right. Wow. Yeah. So um, I'm getting to the fetal moment. We, we launch, <laughs> and um, the first day, uh, the SBA was such a disaster. I put out this tweet and, that went viral, like crazy viral. And in the first 48 hours, I had interviews um, on CNN, CNBC, and, and about 30 other publications, Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, every 20 minutes for two days straight, I added a press interview Wow! because of this tweet. And, um, and so Lendio is blowing up. What was the tweet? Uh, I just was saying that, that I criticized the SBA because they, they kind of botched the launch right. and they needed someone to, uh, you know, a subject matter expert to talk about it. And it, everyone was watching. And so we were kind of center stage of this. And, okay. um, so over the weekend, because of that Lendio blew up, and we had thousands of applications. We went more applications in from Friday to Monday than we'd received in like the previous two years combined. It was just crazy. Oh my god! Thousands and thousands and thousands. Of how did applications. how did all of your systems not just crash? And that was the amazing part because the SBA crashed over the weekend. Yeah, and that was part right. of it. Was, it was just crazy. So, so we're super excited about this. Like, this is going to be awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, until uh, on Monday, all 300 banks are also getting more applications than they've ever received in their entire life. And every single one of them, one by one, is saying, sorry, we can't take on any new customers. We're like, what? Next bank, sorry, we can't take on any new customers. Sorry, we can't take on any new oh. customers. Bank after bank after bank, to the point where we legit, by Tuesday, we have not one bank all will, 300 had dropped off. Had dropped off. 
Oh. And how many apps have you received we had by then? Fifty thousand. <laughs> Oh my gosh. 50,000 applications for oh uh, about $3 billion. <laughs> Never. And, and, and now I'm like, what do we do? Do we shut off our application? Do we like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Um, and so that was one of the fetal moment uh, positions because I had everyone during that time, every business owner in America that you know, people from elementary school, people from high school, people from college, people from your neighborhood, your friends, cousins, everyone that you can think of is coming to you and texting me every moment like, am I going to get approved? What's going on with my loan? You know, I mean, all the things that you felt like, but times that by a thousand of people texting you, like, what's going on? Am I going to get approved? I need this. I need to make payroll. And you just feel like the weight of the world is literally on your shoulders. Well, and, yeah. and we went from being in a great position to like, you know, really in a bad spot right. overnight. Well, I mean, just think about that. Like, it was unprecedented. I mean, think about, this isn't close, but like, think about when Chick-fil-A does a free sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what what people are willing to go through and how long they're willing to wait for a free sandwich. Right. And when the government comes out and says we have money to <laughs> save your business. Where did that come from? And it can and <laughs> people are looking at it like you don't have to repay it. It's like, are you kidding me? But but it's not only that. It's that <laughs> times my livelihood, no, my yeah. family, my all my no. employees keeping the lights on. That's right? what I'm gonna say. It's that on to the thousandth degree right? because it's real. I've yeah. seen grown men jump over children for free T-shirts yeah. that don't <laughs> even fit them at BYU games. That's true. You, that's what I'm saying. Like for <laughs> the simplest of things, people go. It's true. Bananas. Now imagine yeah. when literally it's. Well, see to life both, or death. Right or, to both your points. Like it's yeah. It's like it's free. And there were a lot of people, a lot, that didn't need shit. For right. sure. But they were going to get it. Absolutely. And I mean, yep. that's what yeah, I agree, went on agree a with rant. Agree with it or not, that's right? why there's, I mean. But the, then you have the, the people was... that are, it's like, if I don't get this, it's, I'm yeah. screwed. Yeah, it's it's and all or nothing. Spooling. And you had banks prioritizing their best customers yep. and, yeah. and a lot of businesses that that didn't bank with a bank that offered SBA loans. And if you weren't qualified for an SBA lender, you know, you were you were disadvantaged. Like you weren't going to get a loan. Um and that was kind of like we we felt this immense pressure to help that underserved community that And there's a time sense it was all time yeah. sensitive, right? Because yeah. they there was that carrot of we're gonna run out of money. Especially at the beginning. So you better get it in fast. Yeah. So everyone was like, Where am I in line? Uh huh. So I couldn't look at my phone. Um and I could because oh, I just I had so much pressure. Time. And so this he was, was walking a lot. <laughs> I was walking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking. A Isn't that lot. funny how everybody has their thing? Yeah. yeah. Is that like, does that legit, continue to be your thing? Like when uh, you need to clear your head? Yeah. I mean, then I have, so we live on the, the back of our house. There's a ranch. There's right, like right. this road that's uh, kind of a private road. And, and I, I just pace up and so down. If I see you the over road. there someday, just don't bother you. <laughs> just don't bother me. Yeah. I'm in it. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Good to know. So what happened was that that was uh, one of the fetal moments. I had another one after that, um, but where I uh, we were just scrambling to try and find any lender that would take on these customers that, and, and most banks wouldn't. And uh, so before you go on, what made you guys uniquely ready for this? Like yeah. what up until what had you done until this point where you had the confidence to take that on, but then also the competence to deliver. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what we do is we help small business owners get loans. Right. And yeah. we did it at scale and, and we knew we, you know, we were, we're really good at customer acquisition and we have a, we had a good brand of business owners who knew who we were. And so we knew that if we could get into the business, even though we're not a lender, if we could connect, if we could create a great technology experience and handle a lot of volume and hand that volume off to our, our lenders in an efficient manner, I knew banks couldn't do that at scale. Yeah. And I knew, and so because of the, our ability to think about leverage technology to, to help small businesses, we you care about both sides. Yeah. yeah. That's huge. Yeah. I bet banks would love that. Banks guess, loved it. I mean, yeah. that's like, you're just throwing them free money and they don't have to do any work. Right. You know? So that was a bit, that was a big deal. Um, and, uh, so we finally, we finally, fa I, 
uh, on Thursday night. So this is four days of straight calling every lending institution that we could possibly find that say, would you take on any new customers? Yeah. No, 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 no. Finally, not Poncho. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Finally, Thursday night, um, landed a deal with a lender that we worked with that um, that is a large publicly traded lender that didn't need them to be their own, like didn't have to already be a pre-existing customer. And uh, um, we sent them, we sent them like 40,000 loans in one night through like, and we've got these technology systems to be able to send securely the data. We sent it to them who sent it to the SBA. And the next morning we had $3 billion of loan approvals, PP of overnight. PPP loans overnight. So how did you pick the 40,000? Was it um, just in line? Yeah, just, just in you line. Just did it. Everyone, well, everyone that had, like we knew whether it was a fully a complete application or not. Right. So if it was fully complete, then we would we'd submitted it. All and through one lender. One lender, yeah. Oh and all of a sudden, the the top ten, the, the SBA publishes the top ten stats of like you know who has the most loan approvals. And we didn't know, like we didn't think about how we'd stack rank or anything like that. But um, the lender Ready Capital was the number one lender as far as oh volume gosh. and number of businesses, and it was all our customers, forty thousand. And then we were like, this, you know, it was, uh, we, we were like on the map, you know. Does yeah. your like, phone calls change after that? Phone calls changed. <laughs> I love you. Phone calls changed. You change. can have one of my children, whatever you want. <laughs> Seriously. You own half my business. It was, um, that was pretty amazing. Uh, wow. So you just fought through it, man. Yeah. So then how did you continue? Okay. So here's how the story continues. Okay. So then what happened was, that was amazing. Got them all approved. But then what happened was ReadyCap had one, they had a, a line of credit for like four or $5 billion. So they had plenty of capital to fund them. But the line of credit the, 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 um, got pulled. They said they wouldn't allow them to, to use that line of credit to fund PPP loans. It was, out, it was restricted capital. No. So then now all of a sudden it turned on me again. Those 40,000 approvals now became like, like I'd and the the lender couldn't fund them, oh. and it got we had like oh customers that and you were stuck. So they um, probably stopped turning applications to other places because I mean I remember yeah. I filled out like six. Yeah, huh? once you're approved, you couldn't go get approved anywhere. Right, right. Yeah. you were locked in with that oh lender. Oh my gosh! So then that was another feed. Them. When I found that out, because I'm like, why aren't you funding these deals? Like, what's going on? Because it was like a day would pass, a week would pass. They were supposed to fund within 10 days. We're on day nine and I'm, I am just like losing it. You know, press is starting to call customers are like, why are, it's 10 days. How come I haven't been funded? Yeah. And, uh, 15 days and they won't tell me what's going on because they couldn't, it was, you right. know, rest it was under an NDA. And, and finally one night the guy, I got on the phone with him and he's like, he's like, our capital is locked. Like we have capital, but they are not allowing us to, to use it, to fund these loans. Oh. And so we've been trying to go out and find other, you know, another, you don't just call up someone and get for a $3 billion line, <laughs> you know, overnight. This is like their board that shut it down. Like who, who, who was they that shut it down? Well, they, it was a bank that actually was funding that warehouse line. And I can't, I won't mention the name of the bank, but the bank would not allow them to use it for PPP loans. It was probably Chase. Everything bad <laughs> from Chase. Screw that. So that was a fetal moment position. Like when I found that out, I'm like, oh no, man, we're dead in the water. Like, I don't know if we're going to like 40,000 customers, the amount of press, all that press attention was now, I was thinking about the exact opposite's going to happen. All the good th press that we got is now going to turn into yeah. horrible press. We had customers, you know, kind of like f flipping out because we're, you know, past the 10 day deadline and, and, uh, and, um, so, and it was like about 10 o'clock at night when I found out about that. And that was like, we're dead, we're dead on the, in the water, you know? And, uh, so I finally, my wife came in, she's like, I got the whole family praying for you and fasting for you. Get off the ground. Let's go. She's basically kicked me off the ground. And so I made some calls that night and, uh, within 12 hours, we had $3 billion committed, um, to, to go and, and, and make that thing 
divine providence. I don't know, man. Wow. Some miracles that, that came together. And, and uh, so that was, that was it. Now, it's not just like smooth sailing. It still took a while to get all the deals and the agreements. And, and uh, we, we pieced it all together. But we finally got all the customers, the loans. And, and we went on to help over about 200,000 businesses secure PPP loans. Um, Holy smokes. It was crazy. Dang. So, anyways. And those two moments, like back to back, like within ten within days week, of yeah. each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, talk How about, many people just talk about stay the in the fetal lows, position? You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> yeah. that second one, like you know, where you get them, fun, so you let the guard down. Everyone's happy. Everyone's celebrating. Yeah. And then, I mean, the second one's even worse. Oh yeah. Because it, you know, you you go up there and then just come crashing down, and it's like, that's when people just like disappear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like just where'd they go? Well, Costa Rica, something, somewhere. There were a lot but, of thoughts around that. Like, yeah, all right, because you just want to run, like you want to sure. hide, uh, fight or flight, man. We we had one, we had one uh, writer who who his I his, I won't even say his name, but he writes for Bloomberg and he writes these just sensational like like if you get rid of by him, you are done. Like he will blast you so hard in the press and he he started reaching out oh no and i knew i'm like i'm not going to dodge this i'm just going to get on the call and i'm going to tell him i can't tell him exactly what's happening but i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure he knows that we're legit and and uh, the best thing that happened to me is that an article got posted um by i think barons or something like that it wasn't a scathing article but it was an article kind of saying that that we have a lot of customers that are past the 10-day deadline and what does that mean and he didn't want to be second fiddle this writer didn't want to be second fiddle so as soon as he saw the barons article it saved me he was like uh i don't don't want to write about it anymore and it was like the most amazing blessing that he 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 didn't continue with his story so how big did your team go from pre pre ppp to yeah so we had about 250 to 300 pre ppp we hired 250 uh, we doubled in uh, in two weeks oh my gosh working at home and then the second round we hired about 700 people jeez um you added a thousand people you like 4x in 30 days yeah it was crazy yeah i don't think people realize what that's got to take i mean that's a whole different thing on how do you hire onboard get them up and going there's some stories there too <laughs> whoa that is wild yeah so and, yeah the fr- the from home thing yeah all that, working from home oh right gosh. training them shipping off their workstation do they have good internet do they have that. good computers right. do they have like if they don't here's how you fix it and it's not like desk, hey, a chair yeah all that stuff well Work it's not clothes. like hey you can job shadow for 30 days and we're gonna teach you. it's like no here's your hiring and here's a thousand people that are waiting on you to fix their stuff and they need you to be an expert yeah like right away yeah oh my gosh that's crazy so nationally what percentage of ppp applications got funded do you know and then, uh, and then, then how do the shoot. ones that i, I mean i know that compare i um that's a that's a great question so there was about five million uh ppp loans i okay. believe that were funded total okay. and we did um a few hundred thousand okay of those that's a massive um, chunk and we we had about i mean it was it was about 80 percent of our applicants really got approved and funded uh, that is so good yeah yeah because i talked to friends that were in banks and they're like we have all these applications and they were taking like 10%, maybe their top 10% clients that were going to yeah. actually get any money out of it. Yeah. And we were super proud of what we accomplished. We also had, I mean, the challenge was, is you just, you know, you're going to have customers that slip through the cracks. You have customers that were, the application was wrong. You have customers that like, we had all, all kinds of so many challenges with it too, you know, where the lot that we didn't get funded, sure. um, which sucked and that, you know, you feel horrible, yeah. uh, but so now what happens? I mean, now the PPP rush goes. Yeah. Is it kind of like an accountant, like tax season is like all hands on deck. And then the off season, it's like, now I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, now you got for, did you have to do forgiveness or the banks that lend? We did you? the forgiveness oh, for wow. the banks. Um, 
And actually, that was that wasn't that wasn't so bad. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I bet everybody was pretty happy about that. Yeah, we yeah. built a we built a pretty good mousetrap for the forgiveness process uh, as well. Really? Yeah. What do you mean by that mousetrap? Just being able to allow the customer to to come in and and put in their information and upload any of their receipts and all that kind of stuff. Do the calculation for them walk them through, answer any questions and do it like at scale. Um, so just putting technology around like all of that. Uh, wow. and so we, we supported, um, man, we didn't do, we didn't have to do the forgiveness on all, all the, the applications we did, but we probably did a hundred thousand forgiveness applications. I think Dang. It was. So do you run your own Twitter? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I have a story for this. <laughs> now that I know what was going on during this time, it makes me like you even more. Uh -oh. I went on some rant uh -oh. on Twitter because, you know, I've been with Chase forever, all my personal, all the business. And, you know, I, the, it took me, like, whenever I hear government and free money, I'm just like, whatever. Right. And, you know, here we are. We're closed. Like, they won't let us open our dining room. We're pivoting all over the place and, and making things work. But, you know, we were, we were good. But I mean, PPP money would really help. Oh, yeah. And so I think it was Joe, my neighbor, who was just like, dude, why aren't you turning an application for the PPP? And I'm like, so that's real? <laughs> you know? And so I turn in an application through Chase. And then I get that news story how Chase just basically took their top like 1%. And just, I mean, these guys, all these companies getting millions of dollars that yep. probably don't need a nickel. Yep. And so I go on this rant on Twitter. And I mean, this has to only be like a week to 10 days into PPP. Right. And you direct message me. Like publicly on Twitter, you reply and you're just like, hey, like we're helping people out. We'd love to help. It's just something along those lines. I should have pulled the tweet up before, but I'm like, I'm starting to wonder if now you were laying down in a fetal position <laughs> while you were t like, but I mean, it means even more to me now. Like, so I did apply. I didn't get approved through Lendio. It was probably cause I was at the tail end and there was, you know, now that I know what was going on. Right. But I mean, it was still really cool to have like the CEO of Lendio. Like we don't know each other. We didn't. Right. We still follow each other from that day. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, man, that's really cool. That was really cool. And I'm sure if you were doing that for me, you were doing it for anybody else that was on there bitching about things. Well, <laughs> I mean, first of all, you know, I mean, what you do in the community, you know, is awesome. Yeah. I love it. And I was, during that time, um, it, we, you know, sometimes you say you work 20 hour days or whatever. This was one of those times where legit for six weeks from four in the morning till midnight, every single day you were going. And uh, from about 4 till about 7 a.m., most of my time was on Twitter. Really? Um, responding to customers and, <laughs> like, because we were – there was just so much angst and and, and uh, so many people that were, were stressed and worried about, and people that were angry at Lendio, like, where's my application and what's going on? And, and because of my – uh, because of my tweet storm and, and going viral, yeah. I was now this very kind of public figure yeah. at the time around yeah. PPP. And so I just felt like this, this immense pressure to like every single person, every single customer, we got to like, t is, you know, we can't let them slip through the cracks. And right. so, um, anyways, I, I was probably one of those mornings where you know, <laughs> so it was cool. like, well, and it, and it was, it was so random how, you know, I, I had great, whoever was working, my account was awesome. Like I never had to ask, like I always got updates. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know, they did say like, keep applying other places just to be safe, which I had somebody from Zion's or respond to that same tweet. And then I randomly got, so, you know, I've got like four or five applications out and then I randomly get a message from the VP over at CC bank. Chad Lewis's brother, okay. you know, Todd, yeah, who's a buddy of mine, you know, just a BYU contact, right? Yeah. He goes, dude, we can help you. I'm like, uh, oh, really? like a bunch of people have said they can help me, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, I'll fill out another one. And, and like, you know, like I said, like they all seem to be a little different from each other. Yeah. But the next day it was done. That's awesome. And I was just like, how the hell did you just do that? <laughs> like I've got all these applications. So, I mean, a smaller bank, smaller local yeah. bank, probably just 
people probably just didn't think you to get go. it to the right person. Yeah. Right. You know, one of the challenges we had was that we didn't, we were not the bank that could say, get it approved. Like right. we could do all of it, get it fully packaged, but then we'd have to send it off to the, one of our lenders who then had to put it through their it was process. in their hands. Yeah. You know? And so sometimes we'd, we, you know, I'd have, I had my, I had my brother who was like the last person to get like, Barely got approved. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. Like, like that's awesome. tried so hard to get his deal approved and we're getting thousands of approvals right. every single day. And yet I can't get his deal done. <laughs> he was pissed. You're the worst brother ever. <laughs> was know, there like right? a sweet spot for the size? It was just, it just honestly, it mattered. Um, like the way, like the, it was just so many different variables. Like yeah. the, was your application fully complete? Did it have all, you know, the exact criteria, you know? And if it didn't, like, if there was one thing off, it's like this, when you're doing thousands and thousands, if it looks perfect, it just goes right through on a conveyor belt, right? Yeah. And, but if there was one kind of thing off Spit and you had, to, you had to get something, other document or, or like, I, I did that calculation wrong or this doesn't add up to that because, you know, there was all this math around it where... Yeah. Um, then it would get put in, you know, get caught up and, you know, it's like, who has this, this deal? And, and, and so you would have scenarios like that where, you know, okay, you would, it would eventually arrive. We had a process to get it back in the queue, but it just would get caught behind a bunch of other applications, you know? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so there's just all kinds of reasons why it'd fall through the cracks. Wild. So, so what now? Like, yeah, like, oh yeah. like Lendio as it sits now, is it, st I mean... When is Lendio just going to be the bank? Any goal to do that? <laughs> we we won't actually ever be the the lender. We we um we we f are feel like we're in a great spot not being the lender. We want to be. Once you're the lender, um, you know the the uh, can't be the, the valuation. The yeah, and you're yeah, competing. Fair. You're competing with banks now. Right. All of a sudden, they see you as competitive. You can't. Yeah, you can't be your the customer advocate. There's valuation differences like if you're a technology software company you're going to be high high multiple of revenue if you're a balance sheet lender it's a small multiple of EBITDA and so just, and some Real other things stuff. like that yeah I'm sure so. everybody got that <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry you get technical on it it's so funny if I if you never owned a business and you heard the word EBITDA like I still don't really know what nine out of ten business owners don't know what. Well, that right, is. but at least you've heard the word. For sure. To everyone else, it's like, was he speaking Swahili? <laughs> <right> there? <laughs> like there was no clicking. Ibada yeah. is that English? But yeah. Yeah, my bad. Anyways, no, it's not your bad. It's 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 just funny. I mean, that's just the jargon. But right. gives people go to Google, go to Google people. Yeah. You can learn learn some stuff today. So people still need loans. You know, we did a lot of loans for PPP. We've had 5,000 customers um, that have come back and got other loans after PPP. Very cool. Um, and we're growing, we're growing, you know, like crazy. And so we have you been like able to maintain better. all the people you hired then? Like have you stayed no, busy No, most of those people we hired on a temp basis. Um, and they were super grateful because sure. they had been laid off or whatever during that time. Oh, yeah. We made it very clear this is a temporary program. Of course. That's really cool. But, we shouldn't skip over that, though, because, yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, How many people were sitting at home not making money right. with nothing to do? But, I mean, everyone's got a laptop and a phone. Like, right, exactly. That's really cool. That was, awesome. that was actually really cool, a cool wow. part of it. So, um, But we have about 500 employees now. Okay. Um, we've grown. So you still doubled. Yeah. We doubled the number of team members we have. We're we're funding thousands of businesses every single month. We've made some acquisitions since then. Um, we're doing some really cool things. So I'm I'm more excited about our business now than I ever have been. So cool. So remember when he said that they were doing like ten to twelve million in revenue a year at the yeah. speed dating. Uh huh. Well, on their website, twelve billion dollars funded. So far, and yeah. since what 2014? Yeah, <laughs> 300,000 small business plus. I mean, these are probably bigger numbers now, but 300,000 plus small business loans. Yeah, and that's the thing people don't it's realize. It's a little bit different size and scale, so now. <laughs> cool. but that's 300,000 people that you've helped keep the doors open, right? Yeah, you know, because the small business loans, that's what they are, right? It's yeah. Well, and they do so much more. See, I was I was just reading. The th I really like to prepare for these interviews during the interview, <laughs> and I was just reading through the website. And you know, it's like there's so many different types of. It's not just SBAs, like yeah. uh, equipment finance, like 
that that one caught my eye. I'm like, as a restaurant owner, trucks, catering vans, fridges go out. Like commercial restaurant equipment is so freaking expensive. Yep. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's really cool. Like if you need some, so. I, I totally encourage anybody that owns a business, big or small, it's like, get on the website because there's there might be something. It's funny how we think about, like, I wanted to avoid banks at all costs when I opened. Like, the whole reason I started this was my cousin wrote me a $50,000 check. Awesome. He owned half the business, which I look back now, that was a big mistake. But, I mean, but it only feels like a mistake now. At the time, like, right. he took all the risk. Right. He believed in me, gave me 50 grand. There there was nothing like, if you don't succeed, I get the money back. But never in my mind did I think, like, I want to go to a bank. Right. But see, like this, I would be all over. Yeah. And so, such a cool thing. Well, the best part about what we do are the stories of the business owners. That's, And I'm glad you, you made that. We, we say, you know, our mission is fueling the American dream. Yeah. Um, which is getting capital in the hands of business owners so they can go chase their dream. During PPP, we changed that to saving the American dream, yeah. which was, um, you know, we we're very kind of mission driven. But hearing hearing the stories of the business owner that is that is you know Cam with Bam Bams like that are go through the struggles and and you need a loan to keep the doors open or your equipment went out or you want to expand to a different location or whatever that story is. And, and they went to their bank and they applied and they got declined and like, that sucks, you yeah. know? And they're like, and then you, you help them through that experience and they tell you, and, and it, and it works. And now they're like, man, you guys are awesome. You helped me do this. You helped me accomplish that. And then t like hearing those individual stories is like, it's so, the best part about yeah. what we do. How it's can like, we I love guys it. don't have a podcast? We, we need customers, it. right? Oh we my need gosh, one. it would be so awesome like, for sure. Would that not just be like a customer testimonial podcast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come tell, tell like, us your tell story. Tell us the story of the loan that you needed. You got it. What'd you do with it? Where are you now? Oh my gosh. That would be fun. That, that's a good idea. That would be you awesome. You want to do it for us? Sure. We're in. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> that would be really cool. And you know what? Maybe having an outside entity doing that it'd would be, be way cooler for be, us to ask the question would be smarter yeah just because it's yeah we're gonna dig a little you know maybe we're gonna ask what because we don't have the story you know necessarily right in front of us but well and they're not gonna ask because they don't want to be egotistical and pound their chest as much right right it's true i mean so we could that get... is true but i mean that is i hope people watch the youtube of this because i don't want to get too mushy with you but <laughs> you you seem like a lot of companies have mission statements right and a lot of companies are good at marketing their mission statements, but I will never forget when you tweeted me and especially knowing what you were going through when you tweeted in response, but you, you're the real deal. Like there is a genuineness about you that I think everything you said is true. Yeah. And I mean, how I love when you see a big successful company start with just good people and it's, you're getting back what you put in to people, right? And so well, I appreciate that. It's, you know, you you you're sincere. We are sincere about what we're trying to do. And it, and it is um it's a people business, right? We're helping yeah. uh, and you know, when I talk to my team, I'm always like, you know what? We're not selling widgets. Like that's not yeah. what we do. Yeah. We 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 are literally making an impact. Like if you don't think this is real, you go call the person who just got a loan and find out which little town they're in. And the, you know, what they need the money for this and this holiday season and how it's going to impact their, their family and pay for the college, the graduation for yeah. their kids. And it's going to help pay their mortgage. And it like, what well, like go do one story and you'll, it'll click that quick. Everything how real it is. Different how many marriages real. were saved? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Seriously. Families divorce so rate and entrepreneurs like, yep. But the second success happens and that stress comes out like you don't think about all that stuff we're doing your podcast let's go <laughs> i'm serious let's go i want like i want to just drive to these little businesses like i mean it would be so cool to see not just how it saved them but where are they now yeah oh, like yeah. how have they grown how have they turned that you know blessing into something bigger and yeah wow it's that like your story. Cool. You got 50 grand and look what you built now, right? Seriously, I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> I no. But well, and it's funny this whole episode more than anything has kind of inspired me to 
I, I've got to start thinking like we have one, right? Barbecue is different. It's hard to scale barbecue because it takes, it's so labor intensive, but I've got to open more restaurants. I got to create more jobs. Like I've got to get, I got to get on the ball and now I know where to go for money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This has been fantastic. Yeah. And just make sure everyone goes to Lendio. Check it out. To get some lending done, and, right? And follow you. I mean, you're good on Twitter. He's a BYU fan, so he's a good person. <laughs> That's right. So. No, this is fun, man. I love what you guys are doing. Thanks for having me on. It's oh, thanks a for blast. Thank thanks you for very much. On.